Hey, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we'll learn about Python control statements and loops like if else, elif, for loop, while loop. And before we will start with the loops, I'll have left one topic in the previous video that was common escape sequence. So what is this? Like slash n slash t slash r. What it does? I'll show you. Suppose we have to print hey everyone and in the next line we want to print how are you so we use backslash in how are you when we'll run this hey everyone will print in one line and how are you in the next line like that we we can use slash t this will add one tab like add some space between the hey everyone and let us suppose remove this spaces here so this will add some space between them see some space got added here so now we will start with this uh, python control statements so before going through that we will first look at relational operators and then we will look at logical operators so what are relational operators like equal equal to not equal to greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to these things we will cover in this video and we will also cover like logical operators like and or or not so let us see this with example first what this does when we use and or or not these are similar to like what we do in mathematics and these are also similar to that equal equal to here all these things all these operators will return a true false boolean value let us see this let us see this with suppose we'll make one variable a equal to 10 and then b equal to 20 let us print this print a equal equal to b then what it will return it will return false because a is not equal to b this a equal equal to b checks whether these both values are same or not now let us make a is not this symbol represents not so not equal to b let us run this again so this will print true because a is not equal to b so this is true like that a is greater than b it should print false false a is smaller than b it should print true so what were other uh, these less than or greater than we will look in this video uh, after some time now let us look about if and else what if and else statement does suppose we have given a condition if this is true uh, do this or if it, this is false do this so this is the syntax see so this is the syntax if the condition here we'll write the condition and then we'll write the statement what will be uh, executed if the condition is true and we'll write the condition if the condition will be false that statement will write here so let us comment this and see take one example see there we will taking one number variable assigning 15 to it and what we will doing what we are doing here if number what what this does this is modular operator operator it checks it will return what it will return it will return remainder so remainder remainder will be returned here if number modular 2 equal equal to 0 means if the number is completely divisible by 0 print the number is even and if not print the number is odd let us run this see the number is odd so 15 is odd let us change this to 16 see the number is even and let us take one add one another thing that is and and number is not equal to 0 let us run this see again it's printing the number is even what if we'll make this 0 see the number is odd got printed because first it's checking this value is true or not then it's checking this this condition is also true or not then we can also use or here see if number modular 2 divide equal equal to 0 or means any of this two statement is correct this will get printed suppose see first i'll take 0 only and let us run this see the number is even got printed even if i use 4 here it will it should print the number is even only why i'll show you the number is even why this is happening because first it's taking this condition this condition is false but the next condition is number is not equal to zero so this is not equal to zero so it's printing even 
not take it mathematically we, i am just uh, trying to explain the concept and or or so in and it checks the all the condition like we are given two condition this condition and this then it will check the both condition if both are true then only this will be printed otherwise the else statement will get printed let us comment this so now we'll look at else if statement so so what if we are given more than one condition like if uh, someone is scoring 30 he is getting b grade if he is scoring 50 he is getting a grade if he is scoring more than 50 then he is get, getting a plus grade so in that condition we can use if condition if elif or else so first we'll take one condition then within elif block we'll take another condition and in else we'll take another condition let us see this with an example So here the score is given is 85 and first we will taking one if condition if a statement here and within the condition we are checking if score is greater than or equal to 90 then print a then in the else if block elif block we are checking if the score is greater than or equal to 80 then print b grade or following if greater than or equal to 70 print c else fail means if the person is scoring less than 70 it should print fail so let us run this so it's printing B grade. What if I give the score as 90? Let us see. So it should print A now. See, it's printing A. What if I'll give this as 55? Let us run this. So see, it's printing F, F for fail. And checking of conditions happen sequentially. Sequentially, like if 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 block is correct, then it won't go to the else if block. If if is not correct, then it will check elif block, then again elif block, and if all are not correct, then it will uh, execute the else block. Now we'll look at for statement. That is very important in Python or any other language. So let us look at for statement. So what the definition says? The for allows you to iterate over a sequence like a string or a, a list and perform certain actions on each. And the syntax is like this. See, this is the syntax for for, for, and then we'll write the item through which we are iterating. We'll get here, and we'll give here sequence like list or whatever we are going to iterate. Let us comment this out. So, see here, there is one fruits, uh, list of fruits. I'm, I'm not taught already taught this uh, list part. Uh, it will come in the later videos. I'll post that link in the below. So, we'll taking one list that contains apple, banana, and cherry. And what we are doing, we are making writing one for loop for fruit in fruits print fruit. What it will does? It will iterate through apple, banana, and cherry, and it will store apple value in fruits, banana value in fruit, and then cherry value in fruit, and will print all these one by one. Let us run this. See, apple, banana, and cherry got printed. So we can use an another method to print these things uh, in the, this manner. So for that, we can use for i here i in range range is a predefined function in python in range it takes range like 0 to 5 5 to 10 so for i in range uh, fruits dot length fruits dot length sorry length we should pass one one function and within function we should pass uh, fruits as a as argument and we'll print print fruits of i and let us run this this will print exactly the same manner i'll comment this first let us run this see this is printing the same but what it's doing it's iterating through the range it means length so i'll print first the length of length of fruits so see uh, length of the fruit is what it's saying three so i is taking value 0 1 and then 2 and for loop you can experiment things and learn in depth by trying different kind of like we can try different methods using for loop so you can do that by your own now we'll look at while loop why do you use while loop suppose you are given some condition like uh, uh, in a situation like you, you are not knowing how many times the program should run before exiting so in that situation we use while condition so First, we'll look at the syntax. So this is the syntax while and then the condition semicolon 
and then the statement whatever the uh, we need to write in the while block and see in the previous video i had told you about the identification so i'll show you uh, let us copy this first example see while loop starting from here and the moment i press enter after this it's taking this much of space and starting from here so whatever i'll write after this will come within while loop and this is called identification so identification is this and let us take this as let us remove this identification so now it will give some error like uh, syntax or ident wall or ident error so let us move back to the original so what's what what is this doing num1 equal to 1 while number is less than or equal to 5 print num num plus equal to 1 thing let us run this what it will it will print it will print 1 2 3 4 5 see 1 2 3 4 5 got printed here and what if we want to print the 1 2 3 5 in the same line we can use end here let us run this now it will print 1 2 3 4 5 in the same line now we'll look at nesting of if else statement like here we are not using nesting so let us comment this first we'll copy this see here what what it does first i am setting number a variable we are taking a variable and storing 10 in that and we are checking if number is greater than zero so print positive else if number is lesser than zero print negative so uh, see here if statement got checked here and after else here nesting is not used like if statement is simple like normal if statement but in else statement if the number is lesser than zero it can be negative or it can be zero so let us run this positive definitely zero, 10 is positive let us type zero and see what it says it's printing zero right now let us make minus one it should print negative see so it's working correctly so what we are doing here we are making use of nesting of statement like nesting of uh, control statement first we are checking one statement if that's not correct we are moving to the else block and there we are checking another uh, another statement like we are checking an one another condition so this is called nesting of statements now let us look at the another example uh, we have not studied matrix like list to d list we will learn in the later part of the video uh, later part of the upcoming videos so suppose we are uh, for now let us take suppose we are given a data structure like this and we are printing if i am just showing this you will learn in the later video only see we are using one for loop for this outer part and for like this is row and column so for row we are using this for loop and for columns we are using this for loop so let us run this this will print this statement like this uh, i have explained i have made video for the list and tuples and dictionaries so you can refer that video for uh, then you will be able to understand this very easily let us comment this out now we'll look at nesting of while loop how we can nest while loops so see here here uh, we are first taking row equal to 1 so while row, row is less than 5 column is equal to 1 while column is less than row print star and end for the same line column plus equal to 1 means column is incrementing and print move to the next line after each, this this print statement will move then uh, move to the next line after each row row plus equal to 1 so first we'll run this and see how it see what it's doing it's uh, suppose here first we are setting row number one so while row is less than equal to five so first so what it is doing first it is taking row as one so condition it's checking row is less than equal to five yes it's moving to this line of code then setting column equal to one and after that again there is one nested while loop and within that it's checking whether the column number is lesser than or equal to row, no row number and then it's printing star see uh, right now our row number is uh, one and column number is also one so is one is equal to one yes correct then it's printing star so one star got printed here in the next loop uh, uh, column number gets incremented by one 
so it checks is the column number is less than row no so it goes back to the outer loop and then here before going to the outer loop it's uh, row number getting incremented by one so now row number is equal to two and column equal to one so again it will go in this loop while loop check if the column is less than row yes two is less or one is less than two then we'll print one st one star and again uh, column gets incremented to two then again it will check for each column is less than equal to row again it's correct so it will run two times and then get back to the outer loop then subsequently it will follow the same steps and get incremented by one one and this star pattern will get printed you can try printing star patterns on your own and this kind of questions is very important like it can be asked in interviews also for printing star patterns now let us uh, see one another simple example very simple see now we are taking number equal to one and we are, we are running we are nesting here while and if here we had nested while and while here we had nested for and for here we are nesting while and if you can experiment on nesting different kind of loops according to the question or the situation so here while number is less than equal to 10 if number modular 2 equal equal to 0 print number let us uh, see what what it will get printed here so first number is less than equal to 10 yes if the number is divisible by 2 it, sorry uh, modular 2 means if the number is completely divisible by 2 print the number and what we can do we can also add is even sorry we need to use code is even number means whenever the number is divisible by 2 it is even number and here uh, we are incrementing a num plus 1 so what we can do here we can add one else block here else print number comma is odd and after all we'll increment num by 1 let us run this see 1 is odd 2 is even 3 is odd so it's working fine so this much is all about control statements you can try on your own by trying different nesting and uh, writing different programs and you can always experiment things and if you want i can post this notes in in the description box and hope you like this video and if if you are getting any doubts or any problems in uh, doing this program please comment in the comment box hope you like this video if you like this do subscribe to my channel because i'll be posting all the lectures related to python and and we'll be doing some extra projects also at the end of this complete portion of the video syllabus so thanks for watching